iPad OS 17 is finally live, and although it's not a huge update, I still think that there are some features that are worth talking about. I'm Jean with Paperlike, and in this video, I'm not gonna go into every single update brought to the iPad. It's more about those little tweaks that I feel will heavily improve my personal user experience. So here's my take after testing it for a few days. Starting with the obvious, the lock screen. By tapping and holding your lock screen, you can now customize it. Color, font, and size of the clock are fully adjustable, and you have a fun new set of wallpapers available. You can also change this space over here, so you are not bound to having the date there only. My favorite thing about the new lock screen setup is the ability to add widgets to it. This just makes it so much easier for you to access important information without having to unlock in your screen. The widgets are color tainted, which makes them blend seamlessly with your lock screen, and there is rotation support. So you can adapt your widgets both in portrait and in landscape mode. I have to say that in portrait mode, the space allocated to widgets is still pretty limited. But hey, I use my iPad 90% of the time in landscape mode, so I won't be bothered by that. Okay, another thing that's really cool is that now you can create different lock screens for different purposes. And you can even pair them to focus modes. So here, for example, on my work lock screen, I added the reminder, email, and next events widgets. Whereas when my creation focus mode is on, my widget bar will display my screen time, battery levels, and Spotify. There's also support for live activities. So if you want to follow your favorite sports team or your flight status in real time, it's possible now without unlocking your screen. Plus you can also set up different timers at the same time and they will all appear together on your lock screen. That's pretty useful if you're cooking a lot of different things at the same time, for example. iPadOS 17 also introduces interactive widgets. Up until now, widgets were perfect to display important information at one glance, but they were not interactive. Well, we're getting over that because now you can interact directly with your widgets, meaning that you can check off your to-dos directly on the widget without going to the app, you can play your music for example, you can check off your emails as well. I have to admit this is an update I was really looking for and even though you don't have many apps that have interactive widgets yet, I can see a lot of apps coming out with their own widgets in the next few weeks, so that's pretty great. Also, the reminders widget, for example, works even on the lock screen, which is, in my opinion, a great quality of life improvement. A few months back, I tested my iPad as my main work device. And the one thing I was really happy about and really frustrated with at the same time was Stage Manager. I was really happy to have a window management system that kind of resembles what a laptop does, but the fact that you only had pretty fine spots to put your windows at and pretty fine sizes just made it look super clunky and completely unflexible. With iPadOS 17, this has been solved. Window sizes are much more flexible now and you can place them pretty much wherever you want. Also, you can easily pair to windows by just holding one you have on screen and tapping on the second one on the dock to bring it on. And this is actually pretty cool if you always use the same two apps together. iPadOS 17 also adds external camera support, which was one of my biggest complaints when I was having meetings using my iPad. So now there is no need to look down to your iPad anymore. You can just use your webcam or an inbuilt device like in your Apple Studio display, for example. As you can see, like this is not my usual setup. I'm actually not at home, so this is a feature I could not test yet, but I'm very eager to do that once I get to my studio. Besides those general quality of life improvements, Apple Notes has been updated as well. There is now improved support for PDFs and scanned documents. Now you can drag your PDF into your note. It even has its little environment, which is pretty nice. You can continue to have your note down here and you can even house multiple PDFs inside the same note. This actually looks super organic and it's such a great improvement in terms of how you can annotate your PDFs on here because there is no need for you to open them separately anymore. You can just annotate on them inside your notes. The enhanced autofill fields feature, wow, this is difficult to say. Autofill fields. Yes. Autofill fields. Well, the enhanced autofill fields make it very easy for you to fill out your contracts or fill out any PDF basically that needs fill out in certain custom fields. Another major update within Apple Notes is the fact that now you can link notes with each other. It's really easy to do, just connect them by writing two brackets and it instantly gives you the option to link notes. 
You can even create one from the node you're in and have them automatically link. It basically allows you to create your databases in Apple Notes pretty much effortlessly, which is really great if Apple Notes is your note-taking app of choice. Freeform, on the other hand, was not forgotten. It got updated with some new drawing tools. Now it has perfect shapes as well, and even diagram tool. Okay, there are obviously so many other features and apps even, if I'm thinking of the health app, that I didn't go into at all today. I might actually make a separate video about those. So my opinion on iPadOS 17 is that, although it's not big, like I said in the intro, there are some very cool features that I think will improve my quality of life when using the iPad. Interactive widgets was something that I was looking for for a, quite a long time, and Stage Manager's new feel just makes it somewhat closer to what a laptop can offer. And this pretty much rounds up this video. I really hope this was helpful to you guys, and if you're into digital note-taking just like I am, but don't know yet which app you should download, you should definitely check out my latest video where I compare two of the biggest and best note-taking apps out there. Good notes and notability. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.